Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of Trivani Turbine Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listening mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance to the conference call, signal an operator by pressing star 10 0 on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Bharat from CBR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Q1 FY 2023 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Nikhil Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Arun Mote, Executive Director, Mr. S. N. Prasad, President Global Sales Product, Mr. Sachin Parab, President Global Sales Aftermarket, Ms. Surbhi Channa, Investor Relations and Value Creation, along with other members of the Senior Management Team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was mailed to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. I now request Mr. Nikhil Soni to share some perspectives with you with regard to the operations and outlook for the business. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Rishabh. A, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my apologies for starting this call a little bit late, technical issues. But I'm very pleased to report uh, the results for your company, Triveni Turbine, for the first quarter, FY23. And uh, we've had a very we started the year off in a very positive note. I'm happy to report that we have had another high in our order booking for a single quarter at 3.6 billion rupees. And this is also coupled with a very strong closing order book as well as a performance in terms of an all-time high EBITDA as well as uh, revenue. It places us very well for the growth that we forecast for this current year, but also forecast for what we believe to be the growth in the next year as well. Uh, some of the highlights on a consolidated basis, the revenue from operations in the first quarter of FY23 stood at 2.59 billion rupees, which is an increase of 40.7%. The EBITDA for the quarter was at 561 million, which was up by 35.8% with a margin of 21.7%. The profit before tax was at 50 point, sorry, 508 million in the first quarter, which is an increase of 39.1% with flattish margins of 19.6%. The PAC for the quarter was at 383 million, an increase of 37.8%. We also had the highest ever quarterly order booking of 3.6 billion rupees during the first quarter and a record outstanding carry forward order book on the 30th of June of 10.7 billion rupees. Coming to some of the financial metrics, during the quarter under review, operations, revenue from operations grew by 41% as compared to the previous year with the domestic sales showing an increase of 32% to 1.6 billion while the export turnover increased by 59% to 966 million rupees, reflecting both the post-pandemic macro recovery in the domestic as well as international markets, and the company's success in its international orders as well. As a result, the mix of the domestic and export sales changed to, 30, to 63, 37, uh, 63% and 37 uh, export in Q1 FY23 as compared to 67% domestic and 33% export in Q1 FY22. The, the EBITDA increased by 36% to 561 million as against 413 million in the previous financial year of the same quarter. And EBIT, while EBITDA margins declined by 70 basis points to 21.7% as against 22.4% in the previous quarter of the last financial year. The decline in EBITDA margins in the first quarter over the last year is largely attributable to higher raw material costs, but as you can see, the, our operating leverage, our change in product mix, and our forecasted change in product mix in the quarters to come lead us to believe that we do not have a, a margin problem and we will maintain our PBT 
for the full year as well as our future years at above 20%. The profit after tax of this quarter grew at 38% as I'd already stated. Auto booking, which is a record high for this quarter, was stood at 3.6 billion rupees as opposed to 2.7 billion rupees in the first quarter of FY22, which is an increase of 31%. The domestic auto booking during the quarter grew by by 26%, while the export order booking grew by 44%. I'm happy to share that in a short span of time of our augmenting our capacity in the South African development community region with our acquisition of TSC engineering uh, in the last quarter, the company has bagged a significant services contract for large steam turbines in this region, uh, which is for utility turbines. We've accounted for this for, nine, for, 100, for 190 million rupees in this quarter, but we believe the size of this contract is far larger at approximately uh, over 1 billion rupees. This is, a, this is a new area for us to enter where we are going to be looking at expanding our servicing reach, which allows us to cater to the servicing and O&M requirements of large customers, but also allows us then to further sell on other parts and services which, are, which could be at much higher margins. While this was not forecast in our budget, we believe that though this may be a slightly lower uh, margin business from the aftermarket perspective, this will not impact our overall margins of the company, and in fact would give us greater impetus for future growth, not only in the current region, but by expanding this, this service offering to other parts of the world. We've continued to see growth in our other markets of API turbines as well as the entire range of 0 to 100 megawatt steam turbines. This, coupled with our increased focus on the aftermarket, leads us to believe that the, that the coming quarters will continue to see growth in order booking, and we are confident that by the end of this financial year that we will have a substantially higher order booking than we did starting in FY23. The inquiry generation in this quarter and the international side grew by 22% as further confidence in our, un, uh, in, uh, in our further confidence of the uh, opening up of export markets, especially in Southeast Asia, as well as some parts of North America and South America. From an outlook perspective, we believe that our capacity expansions, which we had started, in the, last financial, in the last quarter of the financial year and the quarter before that would be complete by September of this year and our augmented capacity would be sufficient to cater to the demand that our order book is creating. We believe that our expanded capacity of about 200 to 250 turbines per annum would be sufficient for us in the short to medium term. Uh, this coupled with our supply chain initiatives do not lead us to believe that execution would be a worry. The pandemic has expanded and opened up different markets for us, and as you, could, as you can tell from the recent war in, in Ukraine, that energy markets are at an all-time high, which is leading to confidence for power generation, both in upstream and downstream oil and gas markets. This, coupled with a historical push on the renewable energy markets, leads us to have increased confidence for sustaining demand throughout this current year, but also stemming into FY24. The company continues to invest in technologies at the higher end of the spectrum, which not only allow us to improve our efficiency and operating conditions so that we can provide a better value proposition to our customers, but we also do longer-term R&D initiatives, as I've spoken to you about in the previous quarters, such as our initiatives in both supercritical as well as transcritical uh, uh, carbon dioxide, which has a variety of different applications, and we would be working to speed up the piloting and commercialization of these technologies in the near future. The company has a healthy uh, treasury management uh, system, and uh, we have expanded the cash in our books to approximately uh, 853 crores. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I'd like to open the floor up for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queues. <laughs> The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Sir, Magrath, I have a very good set of numbers. Uh, my first Sorry question to interrupt is, you, Mr. Swaminathan. Your audio is not very clear. The question is, it, is, is it better now? on the handset mode. Yes, I, can, I can hear you, Ravi. Thank you, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sir, Magrath, I have a very good set of numbers. My first question is with respect to the domestic uh, demand environment. So, we have seen a uh, uh, reasonable good growth in the order and flow in the domestic market. Uh, can you throw more color on, uh, say, uh, what is the nature of these orders, from which sector it is coming in, uh, which fuel source uh, from which it is coming in, and, and uh, the sustainability of that kind of momentum over the next 12 to 18 months? Okay, uh, uh, so uh, before I get in, uh, uh, Mr. Prasad, who is our global president for uh, products, um, I have to tell you that Ravi, we are seeing a very robust ordering environment, both in the domestic as well as export market. Given our high market share, we play in every different market segment. And as you know, from quarter to quarter, it changes. Uh, we have, we have, we continue to see robust demand in the in the Indian uh, in the domestic market from the distillery segment, from other renewable based projects such as paper paper recycling, as well as some projects in the municipal solid waste as well. Uh, we think that the demand from waste heat recovery is is there. It did not contribute significantly in this current quarter, but we believe that it will continue in the coming quarters. But let me get Prasad in right now. Uh, could you could you give some uh, some color to Ravi on the domestic uh, market. Yes, yeah. So uh, domestic market, uh, uh, so especially distillery segment is one of the key segment for us and the process co-generation. These are the two segments which are uh, leading the show. So as far as the Q1 booking, as well as the uh, inquiry pipeline when it is coming. Followed by steel and cement, these are the two segments. Even in process co-generation when we are seeing, so it is a pharmaceutical is a major segment uh, followed by food processing and uh, pulp and paper. So that way, domestic uh, spread is quite well spread in process co-generation, covering all the industry segments. God, God. I have to tell you that we see this demand sustaining. We're seeing a growth in the overall market. Uh, this is being led on a megawatt basis as well as on an absolute rupee basis also. Okay. Any sense on uh, what would be the domestic market size? So we will be 1,000 megawatt or probably even more than that? No, you know, we'll come to the domestic market by the end of the year, but the fact is that it has grown quite substantially in Q1 over Q1 of the last year also. Last year had some uh, had some uh, difficulties in, in terms of the pandemic, so it's not appropriate to, to compare, but there has been a substantial growth in the market. But I have to say that in general, we are still away from the highs and peaks that we have seen in the market of 2007, 2011, which were the last two peaks that we saw in the order ordering cycle in the domestic market. Got it, sir. Got it, got it. And uh, uh, with respect to the 3200 megawatt range, uh, so basically, have we started seeing orders there? So basically, is there any order sitting in the current order and flow from the 3200 megawatt range? Are we, or are we still in the process of uh, getting and gaining traction? How is the traction there? So I, as you would imagine, Ravi, the, the orders in the 30 to 100 megawatt segment, because they're larger value, they'd be more lumpy in terms of how they they contribute into our order book. So they have not been part of our Q1 order book, but having already well into Q2, we can say that we have good success already in that market segment. Uh, this is in the international market, and this will be from areas where our historical strength lies, which is in the renewable, thermal renewable segment. Okay, sir. Uh, so... Uh, can we expect some some order over the next two to three quarters, uh, say by the end, end of this financial year? Uh, yeah, we, we, we like, like I said, we're already in Q2 and we're already seeing success. So uh, yeah, we look for more success in the in the quarters after that. Okay, sir, got it, got it. And uh, uh, with respect to the South Africa, uh, uh, the the. Uh, AMC orders. So basically, you, you had mentioned about uh, profit margins being slightly on the lower side. So is it relative to the regular after-sales uh, margins that uh, generally we get? 
uh, and uh, is it the, the above the company level overall company level margins or should we look at it at a, a below company level margin so if you can give some reference it will be great. you know as you would imagine that uh, uh, parts is a much more lucrative segment and when we look at aftermarket that is uh, uh, disproportionate in its contribution towards margin Uh, mm-hmm. when we look at servicing as it is it's on a slightly lower end and when we go to the lower end of servicing such as o&m it is mm-hmm. a slightly lower margin than that but having said that this is not a constraint when we look at our entire overall portfolio we would be maintaining the overall margins as a company and i think that uh, that is what but what is more encouraging about this is that this opens up a very vast revenue field for us and much much more rapid revenue growth uh, the possibilities for us to leverage our capabilities of handling large utility turbines can be leveraged in many parts of the world uh, and and we believe that that we're adequately poised to to capture uh, this market I, i'd i'd like sachin parag who's uh, uh, our president global uh, uh, aftermarket to just comment a little bit about uh, where this can go sachin hello okay um, but 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 suffice to say ravi that uh, uh, that once we are with the customer we think that we would be able to given our quality systems and the fact that we have uh, 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 an increased use of digital tools in terms of being able to assess uh, the 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 current status and life of turbines that we would be able to push an upgradation cycle which could then be quite lucrative for us for us from the parts business we could also leverage the credentials and capabilities of having run large utility turbines uh in the domestic as well as other southeast asian and uh uh north american markets and so we believe that this uh, opens up an entirely new revenue stream for us but regardless of that we are seeing enormous growth in the uh, in our auto booking which will translate to a sustained 35% plus revenue growth for the next couple of years god sir thanks a lot Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mas, Insight Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to understand the uh, margin bit. So there is some decline in the gross margin considering the increase in the raw material prices. Now, post the correction, or uh, do you see any upside in the margins from the current base? you know what is important i think to remember is that uh, we, we we operate in a duopolistic market domestically and a oligopolistic market internationally so margins and and when we work with our customers we like to work with our customers for the life cycle of their product which is uh, 25 plus years and so therefore while we have the ability to increase prices and we have the ability to expand margins we believe that it's more important to take our customers along with us and so what so when you see uh, our margin profile of the first quarter uh, with a higher raw material as percentage of sales at nearly 57% firstly we believe that is that when we look at our own supply chain base and uh, that is not something that that will come down over the coming quarters both because the product mix will change increasingly towards export as well as in a higher degree of aftermarket but secondly we would also absorb a lot of the raw material prices and there has been a reversion in raw material prices also uh, so we see the longer term contracts that we have would not uh, would, would then get revised downwards secondly is what, now to what extent will we will that lead to margin expansion versus uh, us transferring that to our customers um, uh, i think that 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 we are happy and sufficient with having margins at least at 20% we would be upset when margins go below that so our attempt would be always to maintain margins at a higher level than that and when i mean margins that i'm talking about pbt so uh, we may have possibilities to expand margins and they may go up and they probably should in terms of the fact that we have a better revenue mix and declining commodity prices as well as higher uh, aftermarket sales so um, i i maybe a roundabout answer but I, i think we do have confidence but i wouldn't like you to to project that got it got it no sure uh, uh, other question on the uh, what previous participant were ask, asking about the uh, last turbine more than 30 megawatts so uh, what is the percentage share of uh, that segment in the current closing order book is it negligible no it's actually quite, uh, it's 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 upwards of uh, 10% of the current uh, order book uh, and we believe that uh, it will uh, increase in the coming quarters did we recognize any revenue from that uh, large turbines in the q1 quarter 
Yes, we did. Okay. Can you tell me what percentage, uh, broad range? Uh, I don't think that's necessary to go into details like that, please. Uh, fine, no issue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is the line of Ankit Babal from Shubham Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, two questions from my side. First is historically you have mentioned uh, that you know in your segment there are no big uh, inorganic opportunities. I mean, big in the sense from uh, ticket size point of view. Uh, so and technology wise, as you mentioned, that we don't. Hello. Yes, yes, I'm right here. Yeah. So, and technology-wise, you said that you you people are amongst the best, so do, you don't need that. You so just wanted to understand the reason for increasing the cash balance in the balance sheet and not paying it as a, a dividend. Because uh, one more thing which I mentioned was that you'll take care of the capital allocation policy and the return ratios of the company. So if you have no other options for the cash, you will distribute it. You bring up a very good point, but I think that uh, as you look at our, I'm sure you may have got our annual report by now already, you'd see from our annual report that, that a lot of the cash pile that we have is driven by negative working capital, uh, as well as high customer advances. These are technically liabilities that we ha do have to fulfill at some point in time. Now, if you take the fact that we are operationally efficient as, a, as an operation um, uh, and, and exclude that from our cash pile, I think we are, we, we are well uh, positioned right now. Also, while I may have talked about expansion capital pile, the dividend, of course, currently, which we had announced in, uh, at the end of the financial year, FY22, has not been paid. It will be paid only after the AGM. And so, therefore, the cash pile will decline post uh, uh, payment of that dividend. But su suffice to say, that your point is well understood that, uh, that uh, what will we be doing with our cash pile? I think that uh, 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 we think at this point in time, it's really not a problem for us. Uh, that we are constraining uh, either our return metrics uh, or, uh, or that we are being uh, uh, not complying with our, with our dividend uh, payout ratios, etc. So I think that uh, we will continue to, to maintain payouts to our, to our um, shareholders. But at this point in time, given the fact that uh, what our customer advances are, given the fact that, that we do have liabilities attached with that, we think that we are sufficiently poised in our cash balance. But I believe you people will maintain this negative working capital kind of a uh, you know scenario going forward also. So every time you'll have uh, cash flows. But that's that, but that's what I meant. We'd like just to be prudent. It's not for any other reason. And okay. so why when we believe that it becomes a problem, then we will take appropriate action. And of course, this is something that is subject to the board's decision. Okay. Okay. And my second question was that you know um, um, on. You know, there is a big overhang of the supply from Triveni Engineering. I mean, the stock sale which you people had announced. Uh, you know, so just wanted to understand, can you exp expedite that process of, uh, you know, selling so that there is no overhang on the stock price? Uh, you know, you, uh, you bring up a point which is not in my control or in the control of Triveni Turbine. This is Triveni Engineering selling, but I, I will pass the message on. I think that... Uh, that uh, you bring up a point that I may not have been aware of, which is this overhang. But uh, okay, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll understand a little bit more from you as to what you mean by this, or so ask our investor relations manager to be in touch with you. Okay, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Mihir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for giving us. Set of numbers. Yes, My question. Your voice is breaking up. You are audible, but your voice is breaking. If you can move to a better reception area, maybe uh, it can be better. No, I can't hear you. No, sir. It is not good. So I would request you to please check your phone line and rejoin. In the meanwhile, we'll move to the next question, which is from the line of Humanshu Padhyay from O3 Security. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. See, I had a question on EPI turbines, okay? Uh, we had a business. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello? Please go ahead. You are audible. Hello? Sir, you are audible. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
so my question was from PPI turbine. We had entered uh, that business uh, two two or three years back. What needs to happen that that business becomes quite large? In, let's say, uh, where are we stuck, and uh, what is the capex happening in, on that part of the industry, which is uh, refinery and fertilizers and petrochemicals? So, do you is capex happening, and what? So the more we need to do get a bigger uh, share of that business. Okay. No, you, you see, you you bring up a very good point, which is uh, the fact that we have not historically had uh, uh, any large contribution to our order book from the API market segment. As we see our product development and uh, our approach to market in terms of qualification in the segment, it has opened up very large large market for us. How will Trivani turbine cater to this? Uh, very frankly, that these turbines become a little bit more standard, so they're actually easier to make uh, from from our perspective. Uh, and and so it's 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 less customized to the extent that we have with our with our regular power generating market. So it is easier to execute. They're smaller in size and capacity. So the, from the execution perspective, it's really not an issue, and we've catered to that through our expansions in terms of capacity. Um, now. So the, the, Executing is not a constraint. The issue would be more in terms of uh, winning orders, where we think we have the adequate cost, uh, the uh, cost, uh, an adequately priced solution for this market, uh, both at a higher efficiency level, uh, so as to provide better uh, economics to the customer, uh, but also benchmark versus our competition. Um, and so, when we see that our, uh, that the market is opening up quite considerably for us, we are quite. Hopeful that this market will contribute to, contribute meaningfully for us in terms of growth, but it will never replace the growth of that we are seeing from the overall uh, um, renewable energy market in the short term. Okay, so I I uh, take your point, but just uh, the first thing in uh, new product is uh, getting uh, or in oil and gas cases getting product approval. And uh, so that product approval we have cleared across the, all the continents, okay. And uh, from all the engineering companies or designers, now to win the orders that is where we are working on. But the, and the what type of tactics are we seeing in that side of the business? Oh, no, no, oh, so, so we are seeing extremely large capex in this market. This we are seeing both from the domestic market, which is not only from downstream but also upstream oil and gas in the domestic market, but increasingly so from the fertilizer segment. We also see very large investments internationally coming from uh, a variety of different uh, large uh, utilities, be it from shale gas all the way up. So there is uh, there is a lot of capex happening in this market. Yes, one thing, which is our uh, domestic market, okay, in the, in India. Uh, see, who would you be competing with? Is there local manufacturers, or the product is completely imported? Uh, uh, the turbines, uh, smaller turbines. Uh, can you yeah, just yes, uh, give some idea? Right. Yes, this is this is this uh, is uh, an import substitution market. Okay, and uh, one more thing. So, in uh, government uh, contracts, okay. So there was this thing that below a certain price point, uh, domestic uh, manufacturers should be given a preference. Okay, and many of the fertilizer and uh, petrochemical companies and uh, refineries are government companies. So do we get any preference in those businesses, or uh, uh, there is yet no preference in the ticket size uh, where you are operating in API grade uh, uh, turbines? You know, I'm I I I I'm almost certain. I I don't know if Prasad is back online. Uh, are you there, Prasad? Can you answer this question as to whether we see any price preference uh, uh, for for this market with domestic PSUs in the oil and gas segment? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So there is no price preference for uh, domestic suppliers as of now. Even our competitors who we were offering, they also produce these. Uh, they they also manufacture the turbine in India. Even if uh, PSUs comes with any price preference. Uh, So that will be uh, 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 equal to both the parties. So we are not uh, not looking forward to that. We will be competing based on the technology merit and uh, delivery mechanism. No, see uh, earlier when it was stated that that EPI oil and gas uh, were import substitute. Okay, 
So when it was stated that it is import substituted, that's why this uh, second question yes. came. Yes, so this, this is yes. Uh, you are right for some cases, but uh, in some cases uh, there is a local players, our competitors. They also have some manufacturing facility. So even right now there is no even those cases wherever uh, the imports happening. So there is no subsidy for uh, domestic uh, manufacturers as of now for this rotating okay. equipment of turbine. And, uh, in what percentage of uh, products would be import substitute means let's say a number of turbines which are used or uh, what percentage you know, I, of that. I think as we as we get into this market we'll have more information and we'll we'll, we'll get that out to you uh, uh, I, but i think the fact is that the market is quite large and as we are seeing our um, uh, approvals from the OEMs, we see this contributing to our inquiry book substantially and, and will eventually form a part of our order booking in a meaningful manner going forward. But as you rightly point out that we do see demand coming from a variety of different segments and this is just one segment. Okay, okay. And uh, the earlier when we entered this business, the thought was this can be a pretty large market, okay? So that's, uh, uh, thought remains the same, okay, or uh, the probability of this business also becoming very large is high. It may take time, but yeah, uh, we remain uh, confident uh, now also as we were earlier when we entered the business. No, you're very right. We do, uh, we, we are confident about this, this business line. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Mm. Yes. The next question is from the line of Tushar from Kamsia Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Can you talk about this or do you want to talk about it? Yes. Tushar, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. My first question is on the KPEX. In the last call, uh, you said like you'll be investing 35 to 40 crores, uh, expanding the, the the facility to 200 to 250 turbines. Uh, so it's fair to assume that considering your asset turn of year to three, we can get incremental revenue of 100 to 120 CR. So, uh, no, it will be more than the, the, the asset turn may be more, but uh, but I don't. I think if, if, uh, can you can you give give some visibility as to how much capacity utilization you may see of the facility and when may it be ready? Yes, uh, as you know, we are building one more bay in our new Sompura facility. Uh, we already have the most of the capex done, and it will be complete in Q2. We'll be able to capitalize all the capital expenditure. Uh, which is required for expansion. The capacity will be flexible. It will be somewhere between 250 numbers to 350 numbers, depending on how much outsourcing we are able to do and what our subcontractors can do, because that would also determine the capacity. Uh, in uh, Whatever capex we have indicated to you in a keyword meeting, we are not exceeding that. We are continuing with it. And we expect that uh, by uh, Q3 MET, even our subcontractors' expansions will be complete and will be fully operational. It would definitely mean an mean, uh, mean additional revenue in the current year, which we have already planned for, and in the coming years also. And this will be sub, sub, uh, this capacity what we are building is likely to be sufficient for a couple of years for us. There is not expected any capital expenditure for this. Does it answer your question? Uh, sir, actually, the incremental revenue I was trying to get some color on. No, the main thing is that we, I think what Arun is saying and what I think we've said in our previous calls is that we're not a capacity constrained company and the fact that if that our capital employed may be used for cap, cap, capacity expansion, but our supply chain initiatives in terms of actually having a vast degree of outsourcing also does add amply to our capacity. So uh, very frankly, if you look at what what is a greater indication of uh, asset turns and and ratios like that would be by just looking at our revenue growth, which would be the commitment that we have to fulfill the orders that are part of our order booking, and uh, and and so the fact that we are seeing 35 percent plus, plus growth in the next couple of years can give you an indication of whatever turns you want to see in our assets. 
fair enough sir uh, sir my second question would be uh, how do you oh, see the top line going hello oh, yes please sir am i audible sir matlab the main ha main dal dete hu you are audible please go ahead <laughs> Uh, sir, in coming two to three years, where do we see the top line growing? Like, the kind of product is, uh, you know, uh, is customized for the different clients. So, any any idea on uh, in coming two to three years on the top line? Uh, yeah, I think I alluded to this already. I think that we are quite confident of our growth for the next couple of years in terms of both uh, being reflected uh, tangibly by the quarter booking that we have. This current year's revenue is pretty much locked in the bag. We have uh, all the products that we need to do, and including uh, including including uh, uh, sorry, including. Uh, uh, um, In, including what's it, but what's part of our, including our book and bill gives us sufficient visibility towards our growth for this current financial year. Uh, After market, which will contribute all the way up to Q3, is also well planned and well forecasted. The inquiry book that we have also seems to suggest that the growth that I talked about uh, would continue into FY24. Uh, um our inquiry book also does suggest that our fy24 order booking should be quite robust given the expansion in the market that we already spoke about uh which is about 30 megawatts as well as api as well as a continued uh focus on fixed cap formation in the below 30 megawatt segment so we're quite confident thank you fair enough thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of meher mano Canadian asset management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Had questions on a good set of numbers. Uh, I mean, uh, you you did allude to some uh, some line on FY24 also. I mean, just wanted to get an understanding. I mean, you know, this demand environment that we are seeing. Uh, what is the longevity of that? Uh, and my second question was on the margin profile. I mean, is the zero uh, to thirty megawatt uh, or thirty megawatt are the margin profile? <laughs> So the margin profiles don't change substantially with uh, with um, um, uh, the the capacity of turbines. Uh, they, they, it depends on competitive intensity, but more than that is the specifications. The higher the specifications, uh, the higher the the uh, the margins. Uh, there's certain historical markets which give you lower margins. There's certain markets which give you higher margins. As you would imagine, markets where customers are concerned more on price to give you lower margins. in markets where customers are concerned more about efficiency and uh, robustness and other features which uh, which are important to the industrial process those give you higher margins and this is consistent through the entire range so uh, so we don't see margins changing specifically for example the api segment which has much more focus on uh, health and safety and uh, uh, and other constraints on in terms of fire etc uh, is a much higher margin uh, business uh after market as you know is a high margin business for us it has a as a entirety but you have the entire spectrum within it you have servicing which is slightly lower you have the refurbishment which can vary in terms of the scope and parts which is a very high uh, margin business but in all when we calculate our growth and we look at the uh, uh 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 the margin profile of the company going forward and like i stressed a couple of times we don't we don't see margins as being a problem for us uh we we Aim and are confident of maintaining a PVT margin in excess of twenty percent. Sure, sure. <clears throat> and the longevity of this uh, growth that we are currently seeing. Yeah. So, so well, you know, there are certain markets which are new to us, where we have expanded the the market in which we operate. Uh, one is that uh, our direct focus in the 30 to 100 megawatt segment, which is a market which is approximately on a global basis one and a half times the size of the market below 30 megawatts, seems to suggest, and already are, are the successes that we've had, that we will have uh, a good growth in this market, which should sustain uh, um, our visibility as well as then auto booking. Similarly, in the API market where we have low market share right now. as we see going forward that we will we should aim to to get uh, a better market share as we increase our presence and uh, increase uh, our reference basis with uh, with customers so that coupled with the fact that uh, in a after market space as well we see a greater presence on the ground with our customers which should aid in getting more revenue we think that uh, the the 
the auto booking trajectory can be sustained for several years. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of fire from Progressive Shares. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. So I have a couple of questions. Like, so these are basically a few of the extracts from the annual report. The first one being, how do you see the market in Germany in terms of uh, waste to energy steam turbine generators that are already commissioned there? Uh, no, I wouldn't like to speak specifically about any particular market, if that's fine. But in general, uh, Europe has a uh, has a has a great focus in incineration of municipal solid waste, and this is being driven by a, vari a variety of different uh, uh, impetuses. One is the is that regulation is not allowing for uh, uh, for dumping of uh, municipal waste into municipal dumps because of leachate and other carcinogens that uh, that are created in groundwater also given the fact that dumps lead to the leads, leads to emission of methane and so therefore uh, the fact that a municipal solid waste incineration plant would uh, would generate uh, carbon dioxide as opposed to methane is has is deemed as clean and so therefore it is it is it comes under the subject of uh, uh, of the of uh, certain CDM uh, benefits and therefore uh, both local as well as uh, country specific grants. So we see this as a as a very large segment. Of course, Europe is as a leader in the environmental sense and decarbonisation has taken the lead in it. But we believe that the economics of this uh, will uh, will 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 be true uh, globally. Okay. Okay. The second one being, uh, could you highlight more on these uh, newly developed sub uh, three megawatt products that cater to demand for your PRDS in terms of market size or growth opportunities? Yeah, I'd, I'd like uh, Arun. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about this segment, which is part of our annual report? Yeah, these are uh, turbines, which are standard turbines, and these are. Uh, made and stocked and stocked and sold. These are not against the orders. Uh, we are developing market. This is uh, something which will go through not only our sales force, but also through a di distributor network. That's how it's coming. We are building the market. We should be able to give you a more size of the market in the coming years because this is something which is developing. And we see positive uh, increase in the inquiries in almost uh, each quarter. Okay, okay. And uh, so in terms of uh, the aftermarket business having, uh, laying its foray into new industrial segments such as your geothermal and your compressors, so do you see any uh, scale up in the contribution to this division along with the order wins that has come in this quarter from SADC? Yeah, my, my colleague Sachin would answer, but I would like to tell you that uh, uh, we have very positive references on geothermal market, not only uh, in uh, almost all industrial areas, which is in, in Southeast Asia and also in the Australian, New Zealand, Australian continent. Sachin, please. Uh, so, in terms of the geothermal uh, market, we have good traction and uh, we are seeing continued inquiries uh, in this segment. So our efforts in the geothermal segment are paid. So Mote has mentioned about some of the geographies and in all these geographies we are seeing consistent business and repeat inquiries. Thank okay, you. so have you seen any inquiries for the current quarter for this division? Yes, very much. So I think, I, I think the, the, let's not get into specific segments for inquiries and, and order booking. But suffice to say that on a year-in-year -year basis, our penetration to this market has improved. We're seeing not only greater visibility on inquiry basis, but also as part of our order booking. Okay, okay. And one last thing, sir. In last uh, conference call, you had mentioned that you had to reduce the order book of about uh, 400 million on account of the Ukraine invasion. So I understand you had even mentioned that the percentage contribution is not very large. So are these orders near execution or some part of uh, it has already seen? Uh, oh, they're, they're on hold. The entire is on hold. Yes, and, and I think that 
to be to be fair we we don't see this uh, coming back into the order book uh, very soon so we will look to divert whatever that is part of our inventory arun can you comment yeah these orders were uh, at different levels of execution some in engineering some where where the raw material has been bought uh, they are successfully getting diverted and we don't see any major impact of this orders which are on hold which we expect eventually to get cancelled uh we 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 won't be affected in our operations at all in this okay okay thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of abhilash hiran an individual investor please go ahead hello am i audible yes you are thank you Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, so I just uh, can you qu- uh, quantitatively expre- uh, express the cost benefit for a company who is putting up a steam turbine or versus alternative competitive products? Uh, uh, I, I, you see, in a variety of different applications in 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 a steam tur- in a steel industry, uh, one is power generation that they need for their own operations, and the second is um, capturing heat. as part of uh, uh, from their furnace etc uh, now the, the capturing heat as part of this from their from their furnace is is the, i don't think there exists alternate technologies apart from uh, it being captured through a a a a, a boiler a steam basis at this current point in time uh, well of course our solution of concentrated of supercritical uh, carbon dioxide Hello. Very kind of you. We lost the line for the management. Request you to please hold while we reconnect them. Very kind of you. We have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Uh, my apologies about that I, i i did say at the beginning that we were experiencing some technical difficulties so i apologize again but like i said the first application on waste heat recovery doesn't seem to have any alternate solutions while for the steel industry in specific which doesn't use uh, uh, uh which doesn't use uh, steam as part of the process their power generation requirements could be fed through other means uh, be it uh, uh, be it uh, uh, from the grid or variety of different sources but generally because of the remoteness of steel plants they do end up generating on site also because they do end up importing coke for their current furnaces if even if the furnace moves to a hydrogen based the fact is it would still emit heat and so therefore we would still need a technology like a steam turbine to capture that heat i don't know if that answers your question uh no sir so could you just like on uh, um, what what my question basically was that uh, if 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 i'm uh, using a steam turbine versus say a dg set so so uh, or or be, uh, any other alternative uh, forms of generating electricity so then what would be the per unit uh, benefit of using a steam turbine uh, you know just across various industries if you in the last call you had said that you'll come up with some a white paper for this which gives us a better understanding so uh, from that perspective you could just share some broad numbers of use of the benefit of using a steam turbine Okay, um, I, I, I can give this to you because I know this from the sugar industry, where you have a cost of the gas somewhere in the region of about, let's say, 800 rupees a ton. Uh, the typical cost of generation of, of power, um, without counting the cost of heat, because you're using steam, uh, uh, you're using um, uh, steam as part of the process as well. You have a, a cost, and you have a cost somewhere in the region of between one rupee fifty to one rupee eighty paisa. uh now if you include uh, a margin on the heat transfer as well you could probably get that cost down to maybe 1 to 1 to 10 but of course all of this is dependent on your cost of fuel so uh so i think you can calculate a variety of different ways but suffice to say if there is a heating requirement as part of the industrial process which which uh, which will which would be there in industries such as uh, chemicals petrochemicals agro food paper sugar rubber textiles etc etc it always makes sense for you to generate on site okay okay so for heat yes sir sorry 
Yeah, because is because because you, your thermal efficiency is much higher. Okay, okay. And sir, at what scale does it make sense? Like, uh, uh, the industry has to reach a third certain threshold or to uh, for them to uh, to install a steam turbine uh, from an economic standpoint. Well, actually, the thing is, it it it, it may be it's basically when when you're a continuous process industry that it makes sense. The size and capacity would change depending on the size and capacity of the industry and its requirement. But as long as it's continuous, then it makes sense for you to go into this. If it's a discontinuous or uh, a batch process, etc., then 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 uh, it probably doesn't make sense for you to have a steam turbine because for you to get it operating, it does take some time, and it's not not the best solution. Okay, okay. Uh, so, I'm sorry, uh, coming to the waste heat recovery, uh, could you give us a sense on uh, what is the penetration levels in uh, for waste heat recovery in steel and cement? Uh, yeah, Prasad, would, can you give an idea as to what is the penetration? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, especially when it comes to cement industry, now uh, majority of the cement industries are uh, trying to tap the waste heat. Uh, our uh, penetration today, as on today, based on our statistics, almost 30% of the steel uh, uh, industry, uh, cement industry, they, are go they have gone for uh, waste heat recovery options or some projects are in the pipeline. Still, we feel that around 70% potential there of that. When it comes to steel industry, almost uh, like a sponge iron kiln, so 100% of the sponger and kiln, when they're installing itself, they go for a waste heat uh, recovery option. As this new sponge iron and uh, pig iron plants are coming, there will be opportunity for that. Whereas in cement, whatever the installed base, uh, running cement plant, there is a 70% of the cement plant yet to tap this uh, potential. And sir, what would be that number for steel? Uh, you said 70% for cement, and what would be uh, the number for steel? Uh, no, steel, as they install the plant, uh, uh, parallelly mm -hmm. they go with this uh, waste heat recovery tapping because uh, the mm -hmm. waste heat, whatever uh, gets out of those kilns, that is a huge waste heat. So they get the permissions only once uh, they show this uh, tapping of this waste heat and converting into the power. Okay, so currently whatever steel capacity, they ha all have installed the uh, waste heat recovery. Is that the correct uh, understanding? Iron, yeah, especially sponge iron and pig iron plants. Uh, that, that is the segment. Otherwise, integrated steel plant, yes, everybody installed uh, uh, capturing this waste heat. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, and in the annual report, uh, uh, under the inventory section, you have mentioned that the cost of inventory, which I've expensed out, is around 54 crores. So, can you explain what is it exactly? Uh, the Lalit, if, if you could just explain what this uh, what this means exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, so this 54 crore is nothing but the change in inventory which has happened during the year. So uh, the overall inventory has reduced by 54 crore during the year. Uh, but the operating, uh, uh, Arun, I think you can give a better idea. So the operating, what is it, what 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 has led to this has been a more efficient. Uh, manufacture of of, uh, of through our modular systems that we actually had better procurement of inventory and we had better turnover of inventory. Yes, uh, we could manage the inventory well. We utilized the old inventory and also through standardization, we could decrease the uh, win w, uh, WIP uh, because uh, quite a few assemblies could be used in multiple places. The number no, number of turns on inventory also has gone up marginally. Totally, our working capital has uh, improved substantially, and we are uh, once again on a negative working capital to, uh, to with a very good number. And we hope that we will continue this. Okay, okay. And so, what is our domestic market share right now? It's in excess of fifty percent. Also, 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 we've seen historically the number at 60%. So uh, why is there a fall from 50, 60 to 50? So we're expanding our market as we speak. So we are capturing newer markets and newer market segments. Uh, and and so therefore, uh, uh, but, but there, is, there is some competitive intensity in the market as well. Uh, so I think a lot of these factors are going in. Our focus is also more on the export market. The, the reason that we like to maintain a, a, a majority market share is so that we are able to maintain our cost structures 
and that has been our real impetus rather than actually capturing more market share in India because India, is, as you know, is a, is not a lucrative market for us. It's it's not what drives our profitability. Right. Right, sir. Uh, and sir, la one last question was: uh, so, what will it? Uh, what would what will be our export market share? You know, we don't have full visibility into the export market, so uh, the, the fact is that's a, that's a, that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, what we do like to look at and as a benchmark for our success in the export market is the growth of our inquiry book. The reason I say that is uh, getting an inquiry in a sophisticated space like a steam turbine is allowing the customer to view your offer. So he's ready to accept you. Uh, and so that is a very big win for us and our conversion from inquiry book when they do come up is, is high. I wouldn't like to share that number, but, uh, but we, we do see a uh, good conversion from my inquiry book to our auto booking. And one, sorry? Yes, sir, you were saying? No, uh, no yeah. So, so I, I think that we do see uh, uh, our, our increasing our penetration to the global market on an annual basis. Actually, it's happening on a quarterly basis. Now that we're selling above 30 megawatts as well internationally and having good market uh, and having good penetration in that market, you'll see this number only. Okay. And sir, uh, finally, uh, could you explain a bit on this uh, super critical uh, CO2 turbine that you are working on? What is the progress? Where have we reached? And uh, how is it globally panning out? No, like I said, this is a, this is a project that we first have to pilot and then we'll have to commercialize it. So it is uh, it is. A part of it is in development, part of it is in engineering, part of the, 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 the entire train is in, uh, uh, we have confidence in terms of the supply chain and manufacture, some we have to develop. Uh, it's, it's a little way away in terms of a couple of years, but we think the solution, uh, both on paper as well as uh, testing, is something that, uh, that we're working aggressively on with our partners at, uh, uh, in the University of Science as well as at other academic institutions. Uh, we're optimistic that this can provide a much better economics to our to our customers. Uh, of course, we have, there's some other work that we're doing on the transcritical side, which is which has uh, which 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 could show uh, uh, quicker uh, uh, results from piloting. But we, we as in when that happens, we'd be happy to let you know. But I think let it first get into some commercial some some degree of piloting before before we give you uh, a, a more data on uh, on how it's performing. Right, and so this this uh, this type of uh, turbine is no, nowhere in application in the world currently, right? No, I, we have heard of uh, uh, Siemens launching this with uh, a company that they call uh, that they own called EcoGen uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in somewhere in Canada, uh, and uh, uh, I, I think that uh, Mitsubishi has also done some development on this line. I don't know how well it's commercialized as yet. But very frankly, it's what we feel that Triveni turbines uh, developments in this space are being done at the same pace and at the same level that is being done by our global peers. And uh, so we, it's also confidence in the fact that this technology will have a, a, a more people promoting it. So that's also positive. We understand our cost structure and our cost structure is good. So ultimately it's a question of uh, market development. Thank you. I would request um, Sangran to rejoin me for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from Eagle Wise. Please go ahead. Amit, Hello, Amit. Mahavar, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Hi, Nikhil. Hi, Nikhil. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. Hi, hi. So congratulations on great serve numbers and the large service win uh, in the uh, export market. I have two quick questions. First is on uh, the uh, hiring plan for what is the current uh, you know uh, strength for after sales uh, sales force out of India and how should it ramp up in the next maybe uh, one to two years? That's the second first question. The second question is on breakup of uh, API drive turbine uh, servicing globally. Uh, how large is the market and uh, uh, what percentage of total um, 30 to 100 megawatt? Uh, uh, market is basically after sales for API turbines. Thank you. No, no, API turbines are all small. They're pretty much below five megawatts. So, firstly, that's the that. That's okay. That okay. So, but you do have API power generation market. Those are much more lumpy, and and those are for power generation, not for drive. And nothing, nothing is driven at at such a high megawatt capacity. Uh, on the on the on the recruitment, as you know, in the last financial year, we added nearly 10% uh, increase to our workforce. 
uh, plans uh, in this uh, financial year are uh, quite aggressive as well. And uh, from the aftermarket in specific, as you talked about, I wouldn't like to give you a number of our service engineers and how many we're adding because, uh, yeah, it's a little sensitive. But suffice to say, our strategy is to be closer to our customers. And so to that extent, what's more important is for us to have a greater degree of aftermarket personnel internationally. Uh, Sachin, can you provide uh, uh, Amit some, clarity, uh, some, some uh, uh, insights into how you're seeing the, your recruitment? Yes, so uh, we will be definitely uh, increasing our field force. Uh, we have been doing that consistently. And we don't just depend on our uh, own uh, engineers. We also have a network of uh, trained service personnel in different markets that we have developed over the years. And these complement our own field force. There's a lot of supervision done by Seveni personnel themselves. And we are continuously looking at increasing our uh, strength of our field forcing services. Sure, oh, thank you. Nikhil, can I have yeah, one more question? Um, uh, what is the current map market in India only on, uh, uh, you know, uh, refinery like Cogen, maybe ethanol or otherwise? What is the current market mapping that we have for the India total opportunity, maybe two, three years, uh, total pipeline? <laughs> In the distilleries market, uh, 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 Prasad, can you give an insight as to how many distilleries you have, number of distilleries you have in your inquiry book? Yeah, uh, today from the inquiry book wise, uh, uh, see a uh, total permission of a distillery is over 400 distilleries uh, got the licenses. Otherwise, today active inquiry uh, book is closer to around 40 distilleries uh, in our inquiry pipeline from the domestic market. Thank you, thank you, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for participating in our Q1 FY23 conference call. I apologize for our technical glitches. Um, we will try to remedy, remedy them for our next call. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of Trivani Turbine Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lining.